studio today and we're going to be making paper quilts. I know several of you have asked to find out about my technique about paper quilting. So we're going to be doing that in a few minutes. But I want to thank you for subscribing to our channel and for all of your comments and your questions and your likes. We really appreciate that. Thanks so much. And today this is what we're up to. We're going to be making paper quilts and I'm going to recreate this. And uh, since I use all antique ephemera in my work, we're going to do the best we can to come up with something fairly close to it. So we'll be right back. There are two things that are really important in paper quilting. And one of the first things I want to share with you is the fact that you're going to be using a substrate and then a mounting sheet. So the substrate and then the mounting sheet. And I know they're both white and it's kind of hard to see it. But basically the substrate is cotty paper, which looks like this. It comes in a wonderful uh, little booklet. You can get it on Amazon, uh, a lot of different places you can get cotty. That's K-H-A-D-I and we'll put it on the screen for you. And it has a, a wonderful texture, really high rag content, uh, made in India and it's really easy to stitch and so that's why I use this as my substrate. So we're going to be actually gluing all these su su successive, <laughs> successive layers down onto the substrate and then we're going to be stitching. And so that's how we get that effect of the quilting. We stitch it to this and then we mount it. So that's the first secret and technique. And then the second thing is that they're very busy. Even my bird quilts were really busy. Um, if you remember those, they were published in, in Somerset a while back. And so what I would suggest is that you pick a color scheme and you use that color scheme, maybe three different colors, which is pretty much what I've used here. And as I said before, I don't have the originals any longer, of course. I only use antique pieces, so this is an old old piece of ephemera from a book. And I have cut it down, and we're going to use that as this piece right here. And we're going to create a landscape on paper. And so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is to copy this black sky at the top and we're going to glue that down. I'm using a brush with gel medium and I'm going to glue this piece of black paper, it's actually wrapping paper, and I'm going to use that for my sky. And then I'm going to glue this piece down, but we're going to rip it just like we did this, this piece here. So we're going, to, we're going to rip that down so it's more like a bowl shape to give that curve that we want. So just a, a good rip. You want to make sure that the top stays nice and flat and straight and I cut all these pieces down for my cotty paper um, so that you would be able to see it and we wouldn't have to waste any time on the video to show you and now I'm just trying to measure where my other pieces are going to go because I have them already cut the same pieces that we had in in the cover piece so very similar. So we're just going to tear that because you want all rough edges. And then we're going to glue that down. Remember we're not making an exact copy, we're we're just we're just plain and showing you how to do it. Now I've glued all of the successive layers down and that's the rough piece that we have. It's ready for stitching.
The next step is to stitch it and I'm using my awl, my trusty awl, I love this thing, and a clean rag and I am going to follow these stitches, sorry, in the book, <laughs> and we're just going to poke and poke. And we're gonna do the other side too. And then we're gonna stitch it. The great thing about it is I'm using red thread today so it's gonna be a little easier for you to see it. We're gonna go into the back through the front and hold the thread real easy. One last stitch and if I were going to complete this I would put in more stitches, successive stitches down to the bottom too and carry it through. But it's coming along and it's looking pretty close to this. And now we're going to do the stars. So we're working on the stars now. I have the piece already. And I used um, a stencil, which was a card. I bought a card. It was uh, in the store. And I bought it strictly because it had this really cool star cut out on it. I bought it to use as a stencil. And I do that kind of thing all the time, or make my own stencils because I want to have a look that's completely different from anybody else. So you can do the same thing. There are stencils everywhere. Just keep your eyes open and you'll see them. Now in the, in the article, I actually I used pastels and used those with water and they're, they're water soluble. The chalk pastels, uh, the um, Prisma color. So you can use that, and that's what I did in the article, but today I'm going to use a little bit of ink, and I'm using, uh, not ink, <laughs> I'm using acrylic paint, just a little bit of Titan Buff, and I'm using a stencil brush to do that, and just a, just a tiny dab, and I know you know how to stencil, so I won't, I won't go on about it, but basically I just simply created a whole row of stencils or stars with my stencil and then I let them dry and it didn't matter to me that they were outside of the edge or that they looked sloppy because I wanted to cut them and make them into these really kind of outsized shapes. I wanted them to be to look like they were twinkling. I didn't want them to be perfect. So then the next step is cutting them out, which I won't show you because I know you can do that, but we're going to gild them. I gilded the stars using these wonderful little gold flakes that you can get at different craft stores, uh, rubber stamp stores, that kind of place. And I have a ton of them. They, they go a long way. And I used a glue called Adhesive Size, and it's for metal leafing and you have to shake it up pretty well if you've never used it before and I'm going to use an old brush that I don't care if it stays stuck together um, so I'm going to just paint them and then you have to let it sit and dry so that your gold leafing will stick to it so we're going to take a break here and come back and leaf them. Put your gold leafing and onto your stars. Now I'm using a really old brush. It, it's already been ruined and it's perfect for gold leafing because you want something that's going to hold the gold leaf, adhere closely to the brush to apply it to your star. And so I'm going to just pull up a couple of pieces and then lightly dab it onto the star. Don't worry if it doesn't stick completely because you want that kind of rustic look. And 
and just keep putting it down. And gold leafing can be a little bit finicky and you may have to go over the stars with adhesive. To, you might have missed some spots, which is exactly what I did, but you get the idea. And then we're going to glue those down to our piece. I've just finished gluing down my stars, finished gilding them and then glued them down and I finished stitching and I left a little tail just like I did in the original piece and I hope you enjoyed making a paper quilt and you can use this technique for any kind of paper quilting that you want to do. Well we're almost at chow for now but I wanted to let you know that next week we'll be doing resists in the studio. If you've never done any kind of resist work um, I urge you come join me and we're going to make some beautiful papers with uh, walnut inks, um, different kinds of inks, and acrylic paint, and lots of different kinds of resists. So we're going to use gum arabic, and well, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. So you just have to come back and see us next week. So ciao for now. Mm -hmm.